aging face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi Fi battle with just real cords of Skyrender. And as you guys can see, I've actually changed up my thumbnail somewhat. I'm trying, I'm a bit of an editing process, trying to find my way around to doing a new type of thumbnail. Basically, I feel it's kind of redundant having Pokemon Sun and Moon logo now on since the game is getting, you know, what is that, one month old? Basically, you guys know I'm bringing Sun and Moon content. Now, clearly, having that said, we have another battle versus scene on. The reason I'm doing this is because he uploaded this battle on his side, and it's a very, very good game. And due to him having capture card issues, I wasn't sure I was going to upload it until he actually figured it out. Well, let's just say he did. So, hey, two back-to-back -back battles in a very short amount of time against Cena. And Cena's a very, very good battler, which always brings a genuine pleasure when it comes to actually battling him. So if you haven't seen him before, make sure to check out the channel. It's going to be linked down below. Now, quick rundown. My team, I have no idea. I just brought things. <laughs> My opponent here brought a Sumerial, Ninetales, Porygon 2, uh, this Delmice, damn I was going to say Decidueye, but Delmice, Executor, and of course Manibus. I'm using Rampardos, Special Flygon with Specs, uh, Simu, Wigglytuff, uh, Pangoro with Bullet Punch, Life Orb, and of course Frostlass, just a g the generic set basically with Will-O-Wisp, bit of an anti-lead really, and Terra Cat. Really want to, or Torcat. I really want to use Torcat because it's a very, very speedy Pokemon and it's actually fairly strong, but yeah, not the best. But if I like, makes it kind of interesting to use. Really wish that thing got intimidate. Now, having that said, let's of course go into the game. So, Sino leads off with Lord Sewell as I'm gonna lead off with Rampardos or Headstrong. And at this point, I'm just gonna go for the Head Smash because I really, really don't want to see him set up a C move ability drum. Um, so, Head Smash, I really thought this would kill. It doesn't, which basically meant that, oh shit, no, here we go, here comes the sweep. He goes for Waterfall, that's good, that means that there's no C move at least involved here. But yeah, that got scared for a few seconds. Now I'll just bring Mirage here. Sure, he could go for an Aqua Jet, but it's kind of worth it. I can freely go for a Boom Burst here, and trust me, I will. Um, as it goes to his Porygon too. Now, Porygon 2 will go for download, of course, and get a special attack rate, which should be an indication for him, but I am. And Boomers does a very, very good amount of damage, and I was feeling that, you know, I could lure him, go for an Ice Beam, and put him in a very, very low amount of HP. And while I was doing that, he actually gonna go for a Trick Room, a Seamoo Trick Room, that is. And Seamoo Trick Room does raise accuracy, which should be a big, big warning what he's trying to do. I was feeling, you know, his Ice Beam has to come here, it's either that or Tri Attack, or even worse, Blizzard, if it's crazy enough. So I decided to go to Torcat, basically sack, or quote, soak, anything that comes my way. So he goes for Blizzard, I was like, alright, that's good. But I was also feeling, alright, that also probably means he has Sap Cannon, and he does, but he misses. So even with Axie Boost, he just missed an attack. I should say this, though. Had he landed that hit, he would have taken my Torcat out. There's no way I was going to take that Sap Cannon. Uh, but we knock him out, I mean, that's great. Uh, so here comes Executor. And I was like, oh shit, and it's going to freeze my wild light, clearly. As um, I really can't do anything, I just have to sack my Torcat here. Uh, all I really can do now, since it goes already two turns of Trick Room, uh, I know that he only has two turns left, or one turn left, that is. So, my biggest chance here is actually go to Wigglytuff and go for a Stockpile. I am Simu with Stockpile, which means that I can recover uh, with a Simu Stockpile. And that Wood Hammer does so much damage. But luckily for me, um, the Trick Room is over, which means that I can go for another Stockpile. Though clearly, I'll go for a Simu Stockpile. Which means one thing and one thing only that I'm not only am I a plus two, plus two. I am also now at full HP, which means Woodhammer shouldn't be as dangerous for me. If everybody knows anything about Majin Buu, one should know that he can regenerate, and so can Wigglytuff. So, it may or may not be the most generic set here, or even the viable one, but, you know, I go from basically a little puffy puff to a pretty fat, well, monster. <laughs> so anyway, I can just wrap this up with a play rough. I am full offensive. So I had no doubt that I was going to kill the Executor, but I wasn't sure whether or not I could set up, which I do. So here comes Socrates, but of course is the anchor 
the Delamise and he goes for anchor shots. I have no reason switching out. I do believe uh, Majin Buu have showed everything it's all about. And uh, yeah, yeah, anchor shot don't, don't kill me, which is great. And uh, Xenon actually will mess up a little bit here, actually forgetting about that I am also a normal type. So I get two play roughs to, of course, this Delamise. But it, it won't necessarily matter because there is just no way I can knock it out. And I don't have the filler moves. We will have lacks the filler moves at this moment until back is out. So anyway, I'm just gonna bring Flame Twisted Dimensions back to normal, which means I will now be able to outspeed. And I'm gonna go for a safe crunch. And I was really feeling that maybe he's bringing the Manibus. Uh, he doesn't do that, which is great for me clearly because I don't know how I would have dealt with that. Manibus is probably the only thing here standing between me and Glory, and I only have so many switches for the Manibus. So at this time, I'm just gonna bring Mirage. I, I really want to get the damage going, but due to him having two fairy types, actually both Ninetales and Assumerals still living, I can't go for a Spec Straco. I, I really can't. There is just such a big risk of me of doing so. So I have to lock myself into Boom Burst. Granted, Boom Burst is still a very strong hit. And, uh, you know, 150 base of Boom is really, really, really helpful. Now, he was probably predicting that, of course, I'm going to go for a possible Dragon Attack. So that's the right play, and actually trying to see what I'm doing with Assumeril, which is not that important for the match anyway. And, um, he's just going to bring on Bandibus, Bandibus, Manibus yet again, and do the correct play here and go for a Roost. And this is, this was kind of annoying because I knew that I couldn't switch out, I couldn't switch out to... Uh, my frost at this point. I really needed him to, well, hurt me back and fall. And uh, luckily, I should say, and that is what he do. But as you guys see, Boomverse is not doing a whole lot. So if I want to win this game, I need to get this thing burned and basically hope that my um, what do you call it? My um, my Pangoro can wrap the game up. So that's what I'm gonna do. Even if it brings 9 to the I can at least get Resil Damage and Shadow Ball should be a 2 hit KO at that. And I shouldn't have to worry about it actually being KO'd by 2 Moonblasters at 2 out speed. Now, he'll go for Brain Bird, actually sacking the Manibus. Which was good, because that clearly meant that, alright, he, he's not aware of a Bullet Punch on Pangoro. Which is new for this generation, which is great. Pangoro really needed that. Being, of course, a super slow Pokemon. Now, of course, just as cool as Machamp in that general. Just... We need the bank knockoff. Really need that. But yeah, maybe we'll knock out, of course, the Manibus. Maybe, of course, from the Gravity Falls. Only one of those called Watch That. Thought that the name fits. So, anyway, he's gonna bring, of course, Veria. And I am not feeling scared whatsoever. I know I have the game under control. It's GG in my favor. But on the stream, I tried to do some drama. Basically, because in theory, Nine Tails could wrap the game up. Since, of course, Pangoro cannot take any Moonblast whatsoever. Had I not had Bullet Punch, this game would have ended in my opponent's favor because Shadow Ball is not a 2 hit KO. It's pretty darn close to, and as I said, I would have wrapped with Will O Wisp and tried to enforce that 2 hit KO. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to, and as you guys can see, I am not, even though I'm fully offensive. So, sadly, you no, know, my Mabel goes down or Frost lasts, but as I said, Pangoro have the game under control, and that is a 1 0 victory in my favor, and uh, yeah! I, I really, really liked this game. I think Xenon played really well. And, you know, we both had, of course, our C-Move showcases. And uh, Assumeril, of course, being probably one of the tougher plays he made in the beginning, uh, getting damage on that. And I really needed, of course, Pangoro, or I mean Rampardos, to get the damage done. Now, had it been on, of course, Billy Drum said Assumeril, I, I wouldn't have won. There was just no way that thing would have swept my team, really. But yeah, it's faster, of course, the quote-unquote after fonts here. I like the game, I think Xenon plays awesome, and I get to showcase Wigglytuff, which I really, really enjoyed. And uh, I just get to, get to play around a bit, and for me, that's what Wi-Fi Battle is all about. You know, we can look at the people who just, you know, play the, play the type of Kokus, play the heavy meta, and that's fine, but I feel that I don't want to do that, and Xenon is much the same way that why provide content that people are really doing? Why not try to do something weird? And that's exactly what we do. And it becomes actually really enjoyable battles. I really hope you guys could appreciate this too. And I am, like I said, in the middle of actually adjusting myself. I'm doing a bit of a um, more colorful recording. So if you guys enjoy this, make sure to of course say that because I'm going to maybe uh, do the non line things uh, and see if that works too. Right now I'm still recording from my capture card. But of course, with the new capabilities of the course of ROM hacking and whatnot, I'm actually able to do that if I so desire. 
So one might never know, it actually might transpire very soon if you guys want to see that, of course. And as the guys said here, as, as you guys, as I said, damn, I'm just stumbling my word as always, aren't I? Uh, but I really want to um, try a different thing with my thumbnails. So expect a bit of an evolution here. I'm trying to adjust myself, see what fits and whatnot. But yeah, of course, as I said previously, make sure to check out the scene on the channel. And thank you as always, of course, for watching, guys. You guys are just the best for supporting me and everything. So with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, of course, take care. Bye.